So you just got a new Tesla. If you guys are super new, make sure to watch the five things to do before you get your Tesla. I go over things like charging and Wi-Fi connections so that you aren't surprised when you get your car. So after you get your car and inspect it and get all those fun accessories, what about the settings in the car? Because the Tesla is all tech, there are so many settings and options in the Tesla, it can be a bit confusing. I've been getting so many questions on all these little things, so I'm gonna be starting a new series soon called Quick Tips with Chris, where I literally do one to two minute videos on all the important stuff you need to know about your Tesla. So make sure you guys subscribe and leave a comment below on any questions or ideas you may have for me. Now I'm super serious about this, but keep watching the video to the end, because later I talk about things that are actually draining your battery faster, but for some reason Tesla turns it on by default. First up, let's talk about the key card versus the Bluetooth. The first thing to do when you get your car is pair your phone as a key card. And no, it's not the same thing as connecting your phone to Bluetooth. A lot of people think that once they set up their phone through the Bluetooth, it'll actually act as a key. However, this is incorrect. You have to actually sync and pair your key card to your phone. When you get your Tesla, you're given two key cards, AKA your keys. Your car is also synced with your online Tesla account. Simply download the app on your phone and log in and it'll show your car. It's honestly super easy. Now, if you have a wife or someone who also wants to drive the car, you can simply add a driver online or even straight through the app now to give them access to the car as well. So once you're logged in, pairing the key is done in literally seconds. Simply click on locks and the plus sign, add phone as a key, Touch the key in the middle above the cup holders and it's done. Once you pair your phone as a key, it allows keyless entry as well as automatically unlocking and locking the doors. However, I still do recommend you keep a key card with you like in your wallet or something in case the door doesn't open because it's not perfect. So you added your phone as a key card. Now you can finally pair your phone with Bluetooth to sync things like your driving profiles, music, notifications, messages, and all that good stuff. And to do that, with iPhones at least, it's super simple. Simply click on the car and on the upper right, click on the Bluetooth icon. Then add a new device. Go to your settings on your phone, make sure your Bluetooth is on, and look for your Tesla and pair it. From there, if you have multiple Bluetooth devices, you can actually set up a Bluetooth device as a priority device. So if you say you and your wife are in the car, the car will try and connect to your device first. This works good, especially if you're six foot three like myself and your wife is only five foot three, so you can get into the driver's seat easier. Now, once you do all that, make sure you create a driver profile. We have our everyday Chris driver profile, our Golden Palm Squad driver profile. Make sure you guys follow my dogs on Instagram as well as Easy Entry, which is amazing. Now, you can always make new ones and have fun with it like sleep mode and always customize anything. And under the driver profile, there's something called easy entry. I'll never forget in 2017 when someone tweeted Elon Musk asking him if there was a way to get in and out of his Tesla easier and he responded and easy entry was born. What's awesome about easy entry is that you can actually customize the easy entry profile to however you like. If you want the steering wheel to go all the way up and the seat to go all the way back, you can go and do that. So whenever you get in or out of your car, the easy entry profile will engage, making it much easier. Also, you do have the ability to turn off easy entry if you don't even want to use it. And to go to your driver profile, you simply have to push on the brake and your driver profile will engage. Now, once you do create your driver profile, make sure to go back to locks and associate your driver profile to your key. This makes it so that the driver profile will associate itself with the key, making it a lot easier. So clicking the little car on the left brings up the settings. Things have changed since the new version 11 update and I believe things will change again as a lot of people like myself weren't too happy with the extra steps needed to reach important information. However, on the upper right, if you have the Homelink garage opener installed, which automatically opens and closes the garage door for you, you can adjust those settings here. This is also where your Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi settings are. So one thing to note is anything that's blue means that it's activated or it's on in the controls. Now let's talk about the controls. These are the quick settings you need to access to like headlights, windshield wipers, adjusting the steering and mirror, as well as recording events on the dash cam. The headlights work well at turning on by themselves when it gets dark out. I have my automatic high beams on auto and it does a decent job. Even though the auto high beams are on blue, 
Make sure to push the left gear stock away from you until you see the gray icon with the A in the middle. That means the auto high beams are enabled. You can also easily adjust the windshield wiper speed here on the fly or by pressing the grid button on the left. And again, I have to mention this because everyone keeps asking me, enable to engage the windshield wiper fluid, hold the left gray button down and the windshield wiper fluid will turn on. Now, if you click on mirror, it brings up more settings like auto tilt, so the mirrors go down when you go into reverse, making it easier not to curb the wheels. Auto fold, which folds the mirrors when the car is locked. Now one cool thing, if you manually press this, it uses the geolocation to know to auto fold at a certain location, which is super cool like at home. As well as turning off the dimming feature, which makes other people's headlights look green to reduce glare and not blind you. This is useful to turn off if you have tint and you can't see that well at night. Now one confusing button is the recording button. This is the dash cam function that allows you to record footage while you're driving. Unlike regular dash cams that constantly record and save your driving, the Tesla is a little different. The Tesla dash cam is recording the entire trip, but after parking, it deletes that trip. The only way to save 10 minutes of footage, let's say if you got hit by a rock or something, is to either honk your horn or press this record button. It's kind of weird. I mean, I honestly wish it saved the footage the entire trip and just rewrote over old footage, but that's how you do it. Sentry mode, however, is a little different and it does record anything if it detects any event or any type of motion. And we'll talk about it more under the security tab. Now the fourth option is pedals and steering, which is super important, especially when you first get your Tesla. Now the Tesla has a lot of juice and the torque is pretty intense. For acceleration, I recommend keeping it on chill for the first week or so, so you get used to it or you can just screw it and send it all the time. Hey, new car, why not enjoy it? But pretty much chill mode makes it so the throttle isn't that sensitive, so when you press on the accelerator, it accelerates slower. And don't forget, if you like it on standard but your wife likes it on chill, the car saves these specific settings according to the driver profile, so you don't need to worry about switching it back and forth. As far as steering, if you're coming from a Toyota or any normal car, standard or comfort will be good as it makes the steering feel loose and easy to turn. However, I love sports steering as it does stiffen up the steering wheel and allows me to feel more in control when driving at higher speeds. However, the steering is super stiff and it's something you need to get used to, especially when you do a U-turn. Now, I talked about this before with one pedal driving where the car uses the motors to slow down the car, essentially never needing to press on the brake. However, if coming from a normal car, try putting the stopping mode on creep for the first week or so. With creep, you need to use the brake to keep the car from not moving, and the second you release your foot off the brake, the car will creep forward. But once you get used to it, I just tell all my friends, suck it up and get used to the fold function. This automatically applies the brake when you're stopped to keep the vehicle in one place, and to go forward, you simply tap on the accelerator. It also maximizes your regenerative braking at low speeds, so you can get the most miles back in stop and go traffic. Now, off-road assist and slip start are just for when you're driving in snow or mud and need more traction, so you shouldn't need to worry about that too much. Now, let's talk about charging, as this one is super important. With Tesla batteries, it doesn't like charging to 100% every day, as over time, it does decrease the battery life and range. So, for daily driving, you wanna charge your Tesla between 70 to 80%. You can do it on the screen, However, there are no percentages, so you kind of have to wing it, unless you go into the app and adjust the percentage that way. However, don't be so anal about this, as I have over 25,000 miles on my car, and have charged to 100% a ton of times on road trips, and I've only seen about 10% decrease in range, which is normal. And if you do charge your car to 90 or above, make sure the car is not sitting in your garage for hours. You want to try to drive the car as soon as possible. And the way to avoid the car from sitting in your garage at a high state of charge is to change your charge schedule. If you add another EV before, you can schedule a charge time for your car to start charging automatically, which is super simple. You can also make sure the car doesn't charge during super expensive electricity rate. With the Tesla, they made it so confusing, so pay attention to what I'm about to say to make your life easier. You have two types of charging with Tesla. Scheduled departure, where the car knows you need to leave by a certain time and will finish charging by then. As well as scheduled charging, which allows you to set a time for the car to start charging. Now, it makes sense to use scheduled charging and have your Tesla start charging at, say, 9 p.m. when your rates are the highest, right? However, I don't recommend this for a few reasons. First, you can't precondition the car or run with the battery. So if you park outside, you could decrease your range during cold weather. Also, since the car doesn't know when to leave, if you set your charge rate to 100% to go on a trip, the car could be sitting at 100% charge for a few hours before you actually leave, which again, isn't good for the battery, which is why I recommend scheduled departure. Once you enable this and choose the time you leave, normally you can customize it further with something called off-peak charging end time. 
To make it less confusing, just understand what is the start of your most expensive electricity time. Mine is 4 p.m., therefore my off-peak end time is 4 p.m. or 3.45 to be on the safe side. And that's pretty much it. It's super simple once you kind of understand how it works. Just in the Tesla may charge your car if you plug it in before 4 p.m. if the battery is really low and then stop charging and then resume charging during the night to depart by your time. Again, it actually doesn't know when your high rate ends. Considering it takes up to two hours or longer to charge your car, unless you set your departure time by 10 p.m., the car will most likely charge during your non-expensive rates. Okay, so I bored you enough with all that. Let's move on. Okay, so here are my settings for autopilot. Some of it may be grayed out for some of you if you don't have full FSD. But autopilot is essentially Tesla's cruise control. Press down on the gear stock once, then it will speed-based cruise control where the car brakes and maintains a certain speed behind the car. Press down twice on the gear stock to enable speed-based cruise control with steering so the car stays in the lane. To turn off autopilot, simply push the gear stock up. Now these are all free and they do come with the car. However, if you have the full FSD, the car will change lanes when the car is too slow, exit the freeway and other awesome features. And while the Tesla is driving, be sure to get one of these all set trays by Innova Tool. It's perfect to hold any food or snacks and can be used when the car is driving on road trips or even if you're at a supercharger and you're eating food or you just want to store something. Like for us, we just went to Joshua Tree and we wanted some in and out so it was awesome to be able to place the food on the tray so I can eat safely while still paying attention to the road. Now this is a prototype unit as they are running a Kickstarter campaign. However, it folds up neatly so you can store it on the side or underneath the seat when needed. And when it is open, it simply locks from the bottom and this piece fits perfectly in the center console and allows you to have a mini table for your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y. And for us, we honestly go on so many road trips so this really makes life super easy so you can easily eat some food while paying attention to the road. I'll make sure to link the product in the description below if you are interested. Now under the set speed, this is where you can customize the speed at which the cruise control begins. It seems super confusing, but it either uses the current posted speed signs with an offset. So for instance, if you set yours to 15% offset, if the speed limit is 65 miles per hour, when you turn on autopilot, the starting speed will be 75 miles per hour. Or you can also set the cruise control to set at the current speed that you're currently driving. Also make sure to enable this cool feature automatic blind spot camera that turns on the side camera so you can see the lens easier when changing lane. Now another thing I do want to mention is the blind spot collision warning chime isn't like other cars where it beeps when someone is in your blind spot when you turn on the turn signal. The car will only beep at you if you start moving into the lane and your car gets super close to another car. It's different and I wish it was like other cars but it works. Now this part I was super confused about when I first got the car but speed limit warning will either make a chime sound or display that you're going above your set speed limit with a fixed absolute speed like 81 miles per hour or relative speed based on the current speed limit. Now we already went over the locks portion, but here is where you can enable walk away door lock where the car automatically locks the door when you are not near the car. And again, this only works if you pair your phone as a key. I excluded home so the car stays unlocked at home. There's also stuff like driver door unlock, which is a new feature and it's great if you don't really feel comfortable unlocking all the doors when you first unlock the car. Speaking of locking or unlocking, how the heck do you lock or unlock the car? Well, you have two options. One is a tiny little lock button on the top upper left. And the other is the huge lock button above the moonroof. And no, this button does not unlock the moonroof. It just unlocks the car. And the lock sound is a super important one I do recommend turning on as it slightly honks the horn, but it's not annoying like any of those Ford cars. It just, it's very pleasant. And closed windows unlock automatically rolls up the windows when you lock the car. I have mine off since we sometimes leave the windows open for the dog. Now, light and display is self-explanatory. Trips, ah. One thing with trips, you can rename two of the trip tabs and I recommend renaming one of them as lifetime. So you can see your total energy spent on your car as well as your average watts per mile. Also, there is no tire rotation notification. So I renamed one of them for tire rotations once it hits the 6K mark. Navigation is that. Now remember when I told you Tesla enables some settings that actually drains the battery faster? Well, these are the settings. It's under safety. First, make sure mobile access is enabled so you can use your phone as a key and use all 
the features. Underneath, it also shows that the parking brake is enabled automatically. Power off simply allows you to turn off the screen if you're in the car for a while. And speed limit mode limits the max speed. And sentry mode is the parking mode dash cam that records any footage if the car is broken into or if there's motion or anything. It's all automatic and it's super useful to keep on always except when you're at home. Now again, don't leave this on when you're at home or somewhere safe because it does drain the battery faster and it prevents the battery from going into a deep sleep, which is actually good for the car. One thing to note is if you ever leave your car somewhere for a while, like at the airport, make sure to turn off sentry mode as well as cabin overheat protection and standby on summon so it doesn't drain your battery faster. A sentry mode can drain your battery an extra 5% a day compared to the usual 1%. Also make sure to enable view live camera mode via mobile app so you can view the cameras while the car is parked, which is a super awesome new feature. And as far as the dash cam goes, keep it on auto and make sure on honk is blue. The car will still automatically record footage if you do get into a collision or the airbags deploy. But when you honk the horn, it also manually saves 10 minutes of footage. And for some reason, Tesla decided to keep this setting on, draining the battery life even further. Cabin overheat protection. Make sure you set the setting to no AC or off. While it is a super cool feature, the AC turns on when the car gets too hot while nobody is inside, draining the battery like crazy. I've had mine on no AC for a while now and it does help cool the car a little bit by just turning on the fan when it gets super hot and it doesn't drain the battery any faster. Now service is where you can see your tire pressure after driving it for a little bit. Software shows you the type of car you have, your VIN as well as any specific settings that you have. And I also recommend changing your software update preference to advanced. This means you'll get pushed software a little earlier. And once you own a Tesla, you'll know how awesome getting new software and features are. So now you've got all the settings out of the way, I just wanted to talk about other features like the climate control. As you can see, there are no physical vents. To open the climate control, simply press the numbers at the bottom. And you'll see some airflow in the driver's side, which means the air is only coming from the driver's side. And if you wanted to ever enable the passenger side, if nobody is in the passenger seat, just press the passenger dash. I found that the airflow is stronger when both are enabled on hot days. Then to adjust the airflow, simply hold your finger and drag around to feel the air. To adjust the fan speed, you'll see a fan with a number and you can drag the circle left or right. Now, auto climate works really well at helping maintain the temperature you set. So if the interior cabin is too hot and you set it to a lower temperature, it will regulate the fan speed to cool the interior as fast as possible. Now, I don't have this feature, but there's also a bio defense mode that when pressed, maxes the airflow and engages the giant HEPA filter purifying the air. If your Tesla is even newer, you may even have a new heated windshield wiper icon that heats up the windshield wipers in super cold weather. Now on this screen, you can also enable the heated steering wheel as well as defrost. And there's a new auto feature which turns on the heated seats if it's super cold outside or if you increase the interior cabin temperature. And it works really well. And if you click on the left tab, it shows you the rear seats and how you can heat up the rear seat. And you can easily turn off all the heated seats instantly with the press of a button. Lastly, on the climate section, you can schedule your charging to precondition and preheat the car. And you have three other settings which leaves the climate on if you leave the car and have a passenger still in the car. Dog mode, which is one of my favorite features, and turns the screen on with a little dog, the temperature and keeps the cabin at the desired temperature, as well as camp mode, which leaves the car on so you can sleep in the car. Lastly, you have the other apps in the middle, like turning on the cameras while you're driving or parking, as well as accessing the dash cam footage while parked and any other fun stuff like games and music. I do go over a lot of fun stuff in my other videos, so make sure you guys check those out. However, I do hope this video helped all you new Tesla owners when you first get your Tesla Model 3 or your Model Y. Anyways, thanks for watching my video guys, and I'll see you guys next week.